it seemed to be certainly more than a joke. Than that joke that day. You only had to look at what he said in his acceptance speech and how emotional he was and how he talked about the disrespect he had to take and, and the things that people had done to him. And I remember very early on that some of the things that people would say were more jealously based. But then later on, they've gotten more sinister, more acrimonious, more mean. You don't know what, what nobody past is and, and what somebody done been through for you to be out here putting your hands on somebody. You can't do that. It's called discretion. Control your anger, control your, your, your temper. Where was that same energy when you, you know, when she, she emasculate, in my opinion, did she did she molest uh, uh, emasculate him at the red table talking about Tupac and August Alcina in entanglement? That's all I'm saying. This nigga came to the Oscars with a bald head bitch that fucked y'all son, homie, in y'all house. They said that you got alopecia cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just you got all the pieces, man. No, August got all the pieces of that pussy. <laughs> August got all the pieces of that pussy in your house, Will. <laughs> you slapped the wrong man. <laughs> What it do, man? It's your boy 100, and we back in this. Hey, we back in this, man. And um, as you know, as the whole world has seen, Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars, right? And you know, as a black person, seeing two black men get into it, two black men disagree about something, that's not unheard of. It's not unseen. You know, for the black community, I kind of feel like we've seen like maybe like our uncles got into it or something. Like if your uncle fight with your other uncle, like whose side are you going to take? You might tell one uncle, like, oh, you was tripping. And then to the other one, like, yeah, you was tripping too. Like we not, I'm not, we not really vilifying either party. You know what I'm saying? Like not to that extent, like you might, you know, and you kind of, you know better or you, you should have, you know, say so we might do a little bit of that. But I feel like as a black community, I feel like we we tend to, you know, criticize ourselves within like a certain aspect, within like certain boundaries. Now on my timeline, on my Twitter timeline, there's a lot of non-black people catching a lot of flack and a lot of flame for them, for them saying, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he shouldn't have did it. Oh, I'm ashamed. Oh, I'm shocked. Like the whole timeline is putting up receipts on these folks. Like, are you the last person to talk about anything? And I kind of live by this quote. It came from this book by um, I want to try to pronounce his name is 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 Paramahansa Yogananda, and the name of the book is How to Be Happy All the Time. And in that book, he said, "Judge not, so ye not be judged." But I think it came from the Bible. But anyway, he said, "Judge not, so ye not be judged." And it's like, man, before you point the finger at somebody, do this before you start criticizing somebody else. For even one minute, talk about yourself for 15, 20 seconds. See how you feel about that. Do you feel good about that? Did you feel good about talking about yourself? No, you did not. So don't talk about other people. Don't judge nobody else for what they did if you don't want to judge your own self. You feel me? I don't do that. I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not that person. Because before I even get ready to tell somebody about themselves and what they done did, I look at myself. What did I do? How am I living? What mistakes have I made? Okay, so let's not chastise them. You did? But anyway, this video is from um Urban Comedy Flavors, Urban Flavors TV. One of those, you can look it up. Basically, it's a bunch of comedians reacting to the Oscar situation. First one is D.L. Hughley, man. Let's tap in. All right. Uh, so uh, the Oscars last night uh, actually turned into the Source Awards. Uh, when I saw it last night, the first thing I thought was, wow, Ali punched Pookie. Uh, then I thought, wow, I thought Kanye and I had beef. And then I got tremendously sad because sad. the night that there were several things people should have been proud of. And even even, you know, even though the night I think turned out to be something other than people planned, there were a lot of moments to be proud of. Quest Love winning the fact that uh, two uh, women of color and three women in general were hosting the show. 
Um, there were several uh, people who were grateful and, and, and honorable. Um, what I thought, and, and, and as to the question of whether uh, what happened last night was right or wrong, when you hit somebody, that is illegal. Uh, and the only reason nobody didn't go to jail is because nobody pressed charges. So if you uh, have a, a question as to whether that was right or wrong, if it's illegal and could be, potentially be a felony, it's probably wrong. If you told somebody you didn't like something, somebody... Mm, law is not right or wrong. Law doesn't decide what's right or wrong. Laws are opinions. Laws are literally opinions. You can't say a law is right or wrong. Weed is illegal some places. In other places, it's perfectly legal. Is that right? Is that wrong? No, it's an opinion. I said, and you punched him in front of people, you more than likely would go to jail. Having said that, um, I, Will Smith uh, was integral uh, in my life. I, when I, I, I was a warm up for many years um, because I was on the show initially as a warm up. He, uh, I got fired because people didn't like me. Alfonso Rivera's father didn't like me and he got me, and I, I was fired. Weeks later, Will called me back and I was a warm up for the duration of the Fresh Prince of the Bel Air. And he knew that I needed, um, you know, back then, I think it was $10,000 or $10,000 uh, in, in SAG uh, uh, due, you had to make $10,000 in wages to get benefits. Um, or you couldn't, uh, you, I mean, he knew I had a family and he was just remarkable. It was remarkable to watch what he'd become. It was remarkable to watch somebody who became, went from a rapper to a TV star to the biggest movie star in the world. And now on this night, on last night, he became, he did something no other person, black or white, very rarely has done, achieved bo bo box office success and all of a sudden the critical accolades, the, the, the best actor. And that is not what people are talking about. I got a question. Did y'all see the movie? King, King, it's called King Richard, right? I didn't see the movie. I'm really slipping on my movie game, bro. I used to be in the movies all the time. I'm a movie goer. I'm a movie lover. The pandemic kind of like crushed like the movie business, man. Cause it's like, at least the movie theater business. Cause now it's, it's hard to catch a matinee. That's when I used to go. I like to go to the movies when there's not nobody there for real. So I go to matinees. I go on Sundays, matinee, Mondays, matinee. I like to get in early. But now you're trying to go to the movies at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., they're not open no more. They're not open, bro. Movie business in, is in tough shape. But I, I might tap in, though. I've been I've been sleeping on my movie game, man. I'm going to tap in with it. I can say this. I, I like everybody else. I like everyone else that they can only speculate. But I can say this. Um, planes don't crash because one thing happens. Planes have redundant system in place, systems in place, so that if this thing goes wrong, then things stop to break. When planes crash, you can believe that sequentially a lot of things went wrong. And that happens when people snap. And you only have to look at what happened. Like, I, saw, I like you, saw Will, um, hear the joke and laugh initially, and then something happened. Now, I can't tell you what that, that was, joke what the in. was, but I can tell you this. It seemed to be certainly more than a joke than that joke that day. You only had to look at what he said in his acceptance speech and how emotional he were, was and how he talked about the disrespect he had to take and, and the things that people had done to him. And I remember very early on that some of the things that people would say were more jealously based. But then later on, they've gotten more sinister, more acrimonious, more mean. The whole Smith family, man, they've been, they've been, they've been going through it, bro. Like. They've been really going through it. They put a lot of things out there. They used to be behind closed doors. Like the like people been saying, oh, they swingers. Oh, they do this and that. Or oh, they be dating other people. Folks been saying that for a very long time. And they always been like, no, nah, we don't do that. What you talking about? When in reality, what they've been doing is they stay married. They stay a family. But there's, there's been times during the marriage where they weren't dating each other. And I guess they just never wanted to come out and say that. They wanted to keep it under wraps because, I mean, we're still a family. You know, regardless of these little random hookups and the, I'm dating him and they, well, she dating her. And I didn't say that right. <laughs> he dated her and she dating him. Like, if that's going on, I don't think they want the whole world to know. But they still want to let y'all know, hey, we still a family. We, we like they said in, on the red table, you know what I'm saying? Bad marriage for life. Like, we're going to be in this. We, we in this together for, forever. And that's what... um. I think what people thought marriage was supposed to be like an unbreakable bond, like a blood oath, like no matter what happens, sickness and health, 
like rich and poor, like no matter what happens, we are going to do this together. But that ain't what marriage is. That ain't what marriage is right now. That ain't what it is these days. More hurtful. And I can tell you this, that a lot of the things we know, we know because that information came, comes direct, directly from that family. A lot of it. There is an entire verbiage. There's a, if you say entanglement, you know exactly what that means. That didn't come from other people. Now, of course, the public is going to pontificate and, 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 and to guess and to rumor monger. That is, is only natural. That's what happens. And that's unfortunate. But to give them something um, that they can use against you, to give them the club that then hurts you to the extent that you're crying about it in a very emotional way, uh, seems to be counterintuitive. If the attempt was... No, I don't, I don't think it's all of what he, they, they've been given. Some of it is just like really just malicious, man. Like if... Like the whole August Alcina situation, clearly they had an agreement where, okay, we're not dating each other right now. You, you, you want to date somebody else. It's whatever. They might've thought, Hey, this is weird. Cause this is Jaden's homeboy. And now you dating him. You're supposed to be helping him out and showing us some, some motherly like love. And now y'all done started dipping, dipping and dabbling y'all entangled. I don't think that was supposed to hit though. I don't, I don't think that was supposed to be like public knowledge because that might not have been the first time where they done dated outside. Well, it seems like it ain't because folks been saying it for like over de a decade that they date other people. Yeah, I don't think it was necessarily like we want to volunteer this information. I think it just it leaked and we got to address it now. Was to uh, protect your family and to protect your wife. Don't look on the Internet now because some of the things they're saying are even more hurtful even more hopeful. It is a shame that on a night that should have been celebratory, on a night where we saw things that we'd never seen before, we saw a thing we'd never seen before. And it's sad, but it says a lot about what we allow people to have access to and the things that we allow, that we hold precious, that we let people use against us. Too much. And not on purpose. I think it's, 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 it's great to try to be transparent, but there are things that come along with that. There's some of the things ridicule that repeat and regurgitate and rumor about are things that come from that very family. And that's a shame. Now, if that's how you want to be, no one can uh, stop you from saying anything you want to say, but understand who people are. When, when you're telling us, when you're crying, when you're emotional about something you've gone through, it was not just that day. It was a series of days. There have been some humiliating things that have happened. We all have those things happen in our families, in our relationships, in our business dealing. We just mostly don't have to ha do them out loud. But I would say that he's doing it in front of the whole world. I don't think every you, issue you owe it to people to give them the club that they beat you with. I don't think you owe it to people to give you the knives that they cut you with or the ammunition they use to blow you apart. In the Bible, it says, "Do not get dogs what is sacred." Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. And a variation of that is what played out last night. It was sad. It Don't give your pearls to your pigs. They're going to trample them and turn around. And... I'm trying to digest that. Eh. It was mean, but it happened. And I think some of the things that people do to us we give them the ammunition that they need. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the jazz report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hugo Show. All right, now we got Ricky Smiley. Nothing, nothing at all justify, justifies Will walking up, slapping the shit out of somebody while they, while they on stage. Now, if Jada, if I was Will Smith, if I, and we all different. I'm just saying the way I would have handled this is uh, <clears throat> when he told the joke, I would have got out of my seat, but I would have went to my left or to my right to get backstage. Find out, okay, when the when the talent come off stage, do they come off stage to this side or this side? <laughs> uh, when, okay, they come out to this side right here. Okay, I would have patiently waited for Chris Rock to come off stage and when Chris Rock came on stage, I would have been like, uh, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I would have took Chris Rock in a small room and I would have asked him, I would have been like, 
So what's up? What's up with that? What you just said about my wife? And I would have at least, because what happened is, what happened is that would have given Chris Rock the opportunity to make the correction, right? That would have given Chris Rock the opportunity to say, hey man, I didn't mean any harm. Or, you know, hey, fuck you, I said what I said. Right. Okay, if he would have- Let me know how you really feel. If said, fuck you, I said what I said, then slap the shit out of him, if that's what you was gonna do. But did you give him an opportunity to correct? Did you give him an opportunity to apologize? Or you could have sat in your seat and said, keep your, keep my wife name out your fucking mouth. And that would have been that. That would have been that. He would have went on to the next joke or went on to somebody else. You could have made your point without. Hey, I mean, you can't, you can't tell somebody how to react to something though. Like you don't know what's behind that. You don't know how many nights she done sat up and was sad and cried about her hair and you know, women, women love their hair. Like a lot of women, that's like their hair is their identity. Not to say that men don't love their hair because men do love their hair and men also do grieve the loss of their hair. If you're a woman and you're watching this, men also grieve the loss of their hair. Men don't want to lose their hair. Just like you don't want to, just like you don't want to lose your hair. They both, we both grieve. You feel me? But as a man, you sit next to your wife and seeing her be sad and seeing her try to push through it and uplift herself about her hair and ultimately her saying like, okay, I just got to be proud in my eyes and just rock it and bump it. Like that, that was probably growth after, after the sadness, like after the sadness, she came out of that. So maybe he caught the tail end of a bunch of backlash of a bunch of hurt of a bunch of people in comment sections and Instagram comments and all kind of articles and ridicules and then he said something at the 2016 Oscars. It's like, you don't know what built up to make that slap happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm walking up on stage, putting your hands on somebody. Because I tell you what, if you would have came up there and slapped me, he would have been limping back. All of Birmingham, all of Kingston, all of Airport, all of Center Point and Roebuck would have came out of me. And and that, that, that person I, that I keep, uh, uh, with held and I'm, I'm talking about I stand strong on my manhood period I stand strong on my manhood and regardless of whether uh Chris Rock Chris charges or not uh he should be arrested because that was assault that was assault Donna Weber you on here you're a police officer that was assault and uh, and the LAPD is you know it ain't about okay protecting women how many people in the cemetery for making the wrong decision and doing it the wrong way. How many people are at Zion Memorial Gardens or at, 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 at Carver Memorial Cemetery for making the wrong decision? Okay, I can, I can fill him on that because a lot of men do get pulled into some BS because of a woman. Like a woman, you know, if they're into it with a man or they got some beef with a man, some, some women mis, misuse the love that they have for men. Like I've seen women just have a regular argument with a man and then talk about calling boyfriends and brothers and they finna come do this and that and this. So many men have died because of that. Like you misusing the situation. Like just because you're upset with a man don't mean you need to call some men because these men are assuming the worst. And some women lie. I done been lied on by a woman. Like, yeah, he did this to me the whole time. I ain't did none of that. And then I got a whole angry mob chasing me. I didn't do it, but it don't matter. Cause she said I did. You feel what I'm saying? You don't know what, what nobody past is and, and what somebody done been through for you to be out here putting your hands on somebody. You can't do that. It's called discretion. Control your anger, control your, your, your temper. Where was that same energy when you, you know, when she, she emasculate, in my opinion, did she, did she molest, uh, uh, emasculate him at the red table talking about Tupac and August Alcina and entanglement? That's all I'm saying. It, I got time, babe. Oh yeah, we still got about three minutes. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't put your hands on nobody. It's cause somebody say something. Period. They say he who angers you controls you. And that's a fact. Somebody gets you enraged and you act out of your character. You do some, you make a mistake in your life. That person that made you angry just controlled your actions. He who angers you controls you. You got to always be in control of your, of your emotions and your actions at all times. It's way easier said than done, but you got to practice that. You can't let nobody get you out of your character ever. Put them to the side, go in the room, say, Hey, what's up with what you said? Hey man, this was on the script or it wasn't on the script or off the top of my head. It was a bad joke. Uh, I would apologize to you as a man. Uh, respectfully apologize, and I would like to apologize uh, to your wife. Respectfully. Forgive me, Will Smith, for what I said. Give him the opportunity to make the correction if you if you felt that way about it. But no, you went up there and you snapped him. Did, did anybody go and ask Chris, Chris Rock, was he okay? Right? Did anybody, did anybody go up there, go to Chris Rock, and, and say, hey man, you good, you straight, uh, you need us to handle. Nobody went to Chris Rock, everybody just assumed that, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 you know, even if you felt like he crossed the line, is it okay? And I don't care what the emotion is, I don't care what about the past anger, or he mad about other shit or whatever. What if Chris Rock would've, would've hit him back or kicked his ass or pulled out a gun and, and shot his ass? What, what, what if? Come on, thank you with a shot in the audience if you'd have yelled out, keep your my fucking name, wife name out your mouth. I don't think you would have shot him then. But you didn't want to put your hands on somebody. That's why a lot of people in the cemetery because of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird situation. Cause I mean, I can understand you being upset and then you, you, you might've laughed it off. And then you looked over and you seen your wife's face. And you like, no, it could have been triggering. Could've been, you could have been like, no, nah, not again. Never again. No, not again. It could have been a trigger, bro. Sometimes them triggers, man, you just, they send you, they send you just off the handle, man. Off the handle. You know, I can't say how I would have handled it. I, I just, um, you know, you try to, you try to do, you try to do your best. You try to make the best decision, but in the heat of the moment, who knows what you will do. I don't care how deep his emotions is and what his past anger is about. None of that stuff don't matter. You don't walk up on stage in front of folks and put your hands on folks or whatever. You know, shit, it is bad jokes. What the fuck you want comedians to do? Well, we got to go and whisper in your ear, say, you know, whatever. I, you know, me personally, I wouldn't have did it, did the joke if I knew that she's sensitive about or whatever. How do you know that he, he didn't know that she had alopecia? But I damn sure didn't know. I didn't hear, I, I don't watch the red table. I didn't know. So if I go out there and 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 do a joke or, or say something uh that was offensive or whatever, then I'm gonna, oh shit, my bad. My bad, bro. I apologize. I didn't mean nothing by that. You know what I'm saying? G.I. Jane was not um a prostitute. G.I. Jane was a hero. Right. You know what I'm saying? So don't so know why you with the prostitute. It, it wasn't the funniest joke, and it wasn't, I don't think. And, and then the question become, what was his intent? Was his intent to do harm? You know, and uh, on the, I, I don't that's the one thing I be saying, like a lot of comedians, they'll catch flack for their jokes. And it's like, you know, that they're just trying to make people laugh. You know, they're trying to make light of situations. Most comedians are not trying to cause harm. Their job is to make people laugh. They're trying to make you laugh. They're trying to be funny. Sometimes they are messed up. Sometimes stuff ain't funny. Sometimes it's like, okay, plenty of comedians done got slapped, punched, jumped after the shows, during the shows. You live and you learn, but they're trying to make you laugh. That's their goal. Make people laugh. I want people to have a good time. You feel me? I don't know. And then you fucked it up for uh, uh, for Will Packer. That was his big night. And nobody even know that you won the award because you went up there and slapped somebody. Nah, we know, we know. Nobody we know. know that you won. And I'm, I'm watching we know. people tweet like, stand up for black women. So it's a lot of single black women out here because their spouse is in the cemetery or whatever for not walking away or making a bad decision. You don't put your fucking hands on people, period. Point blank. Period. And that's that. That's my opinion.
All right, and lastly, I'm gonna watch the one with Corey Holcomb. Corey Holcomb is a little raw. Corey Holcomb is a little brass, but is it brass or brash? Brass, brash. It means self-assertive in a rude, noisy, or overbearing way. Brash. Would do all kind of fuck shit, but if it is fake, this is an embarrassment. Thank you, Joe Thompson, for the needed that twenty dollars. This is an embarrassment to black people if it is fake because the brother, Will Packer, was in charge of the Oscars, so to speak. And if they let black people go up there and act a fool like that staged, I am ashamed of everybody who has something to do with it. If black people turn the Oscars into the mini version of the 99 Source Awards. Y'all went for that shit? I'm embarrassed for you. But I don't think it was staged. He had to put that disclaimer in there. Like, if it was staged, y'all tripping. But I don't think it was. I don't think it was either. It could have been. It could have been. They are actors at the end of the day. But I don't I don't think it was. It, it was just very... um. Chris Rock seemed confused. Like G.I. Jane? <laughs> I don't think it was staged. I think that every man who is of a certain age, over 45, every man who allows a evil, cankerous whore <laughs> to be in their presence at age 45 and older, if you allow a evil, wicked bitch who fuck her son's friend to accompany you on your shoulder in public, you ain't going to get nothing but drama. Let's just start saying that. You cannot sit up front at the Oscars with a bald head, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and expect nobody not to say something. It is impossible. <laughs> you cannot be with, as my man Willie D said, ball head hog. Even Lupita had a wig on. Lupita. What yeah, Lupita that? Eh? The African bitch had some hair. She knew better than that. Man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, bro. We're not in a marriage. So it's like weird. Cause like to us, it looks so, it looks so dysfunctional. Like what is y'all over there doing? Why did she date this young man? Why was y'all like in y'all house with it? Like, like with your blessing and everything. Cause I mean, clearly if that's going on, he had to been dating somebody too. You remember when fancy, um, from Jamie Foxx show fancy, she had done, Posted on IG and Jada was on some like, hold on, player. A lot of folks were saying rumors like Will was dating Fancy from Jamie Foxx show. I don't know how to say her real name, so I'm not going to try. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm not going to try. But um, you know who Fancy is, bro. But that was rumors. So it's like, man, for you to even condone or tolerate any of that, you had to have been doing your thing, too. This nigga came to the Oscars with a bald head bitch that Y'all son, homie, in y'all house. They said that you got alopecia code. <laughs> <laughs> they said you got alopecia, man. No, August got all the pieces of that pussy. <laughs> August got all the pieces of that pussy in your house, Will. <laughs> you slapped the wrong man. Oh, my God, <laughs> you bro. You slapped the wrong man. Man, uh, <laughs> a man say, G.I. Jane, he said, I love you. G.I. Jane, too. Can't wait to see you. Yeah. Will, your goof ass laughed at first. You got checked by your bitch on site. Your bitch did this. That nigga said, <laughs> 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 you like that, man? <laughs> <laughs> that's what it seemed like for real like cause we all saw him laughing at first but maybe it didn't register maybe you know you had these award shows and it's like your knee jerk reaction just to laugh because i mean there's a person telling jokes so you're just laughing just to keep the show rolling maybe he laughed and was like hold on 
He had to have made eye contact. They didn't show us that part. I know somebody got it on film. The lead up. I want to see him looking over and getting up. They didn't show that part. Somebody, there was a camera that was on them when it happened. They're not going to show that, though. Nigga, you a goofy for that, nigga. <laughs> you a goofy, nigga. <laughs> How in the fuck we live in a world? First of all, man, come on, man. Chris Rock, 155 pounds. He don't fight motherfuckers. Chris Rock ain't known for fighting motherfuckers. Will Smith, I know you a big nigga. I know you be with them goons. I know them goons from Philly. I don't mean no disrespect by telling the truth. Them goons from Philly, even if they mad at me, y'all motherfuckers need to make sure y'all man know what's up. He around a cankerous whore. I got that off that movie, Tropical Thunder. <laughs> I just thought it was good. <laughs> Your wife's a cankerous whore! <laughs> Hey, Will, you remember way back when when I said your wife was a cankerous whore? I didn't mean it, man. I didn't mean it. <laughs> Nigga, what the fuck? Will, you are black acting. You came from motherfucking rapping to turn it into one of the best actors I've seen. Of all? Ever. What's like, that movie where he was on the island, stranded, and the monsters was out there? I, uh, uh, I am I, legend. I'm legend. Yeah, I'm legend. Man, that man should have won an Oscar for I Am Legend. Yeah. Have you seen that movie? Yeah. Man, that motherfucker was raw that's in that bad, movie. That's a bad ass dude. I read a book. One well, almost through with it. I'm almost through the book. Well, hey, man, cold. Will Smith suffers from being around an awful bitch. This bitch went on Oprah and said, You fuck her like a girl. Oh, I didn't even know she said that. You don't know all the shit. Uh-uh. I know she's been that trying to- That bitch said, I don't love him. <laughs> I know she's been trying to get him to uh, be like Tupac his whole life. This nigga is chasing a dead man swag. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my boy coming too raw with it, bro. Pull some punches. Jesus, bro. Like, I don't know. It's been a lot of headlines and, 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 and things of that nature from, from Jada's Red Table talk. I didn't see I didn't see when she said that on I didn't I didn't see when she said that on Oprah. But I did see when they was talking um I did a reaction video about some some headline that, that made the rounds on, on social media that Jada said this about Will. And then I actually watched the video and she didn't say that. So it's hard for me to just listen to somebody say something or, or read a headline and believe it. Because every time I read a headline and I actually read or actually watch the actual video, that's not what happened. So I don't react to headlines ever. I don't I don't read a headline and be like, yeah, that's what happened. No, I go watch the actual footage or read the actual article because I'm not going to go with no headline because the headline just wants you to get views. They're clickbaiting you. How many YouTube videos have you watched where the video had nothing to do with the title? They just wanted you to click the video and the thumbnail was lying to clickbait. Man, I'm not going to go to the award show with no bitch. I ain't got no control of. Nigga, that bitch was smiling when he was up there crying, apologizing. Yeah. When he was up there crying, apologizing, that bitch was like, that was she looked, happy she, moment. She, she looked proud to me. I don't know. She looked proud to me. The family like they on Red talk, Table Talk. Man, that bitch set them motherfuckers out. And when you set yourself out, you open for ridicule. Yeah, man. So people are, most of, most of those those comedians, you know what I'm saying? Fellow comedians to Chris Rock, you know what I'm saying? They, it seems like they all feel like he shouldn't have done it. He should have addressed it a separate way. And they also came with the, oh, I mean, when you put this information out here, you leave yourself open to be ridiculed and be talked about and be this and be that. Which, I mean, you do. When you're in the public eye and you share things about yourself, you you are giving people ammo that they can use at any time. And just being a, a entertainer, a public figure anyway, people look at you like you're not human. They, they look at you like you you don't have feelings, like you won't read them comments. But yeah, man, I try not to judge anybody in any situation. I try, I try not to judge anybody on what they did. I try to forgive um, people and overlook, you know, saying their mistakes. Like I said, before you do this one time, do this two times. Before you do that, do this. Most people don't want to talk about their mistakes and their issues and their shortcomings in life. So if you don't want to talk about yourself, don't talk about other people. It's that easy. It's that simple. I just looked at it like, hey, our uncles got into it. They gon' um, 
I, I expect them to piece it up and they both seem to be like somewhat respectable, somewhat, you know what I'm saying, caring. So I expect them to piece it up some kind of way. I think uh, Will already issued a statement apologizing to Chris and the Academy. I think Chris came out with a statement and apologized to Will and Jada. So there's been apologies, like written statements on both sides, but I think that there'll come a time where they piece it up. I don't know if they gotta all sit down and, you know, record a video, red table. I don't know if they got a IG picture, dap it up. But I, I, I assume that they gonna, in the near future, piece this thing on up. But uh, let me know how you feel about this in the comments, man. What is your opinion on the situation? Do you feel like Will was wrong? Do you feel like Chris was wrong? Do you feel like, hey man, this just happened? Like, this just happens in the black community? Cause I mean, a lot of the, you know what I'm saying, nine black people, they, they, they packing them up. Zoe Kravitz getting packed up. Jim Carrey getting packed up. Like, they packing folks up. And I, I, I'm not calling Zoe non-black, but she is, a uh, uh, it's some, it's some mixed races in there somewhere. But, um, yeah, a lot of folks, they just pulling their receipts. Like, man, you the last person to say anything about anything. Like, you shouldn't, you should, you need to be quiet. But as far as like trying to, you know, vilify Will or chris i don't see that too much from us and i also seen um an article where people trying to say that um chris rock is on the spectrum um and he had he might have asperger's or like a little taste of asperger's you feel me i think he said that in the interview or, or some some kind of documentation or some or some kind of article somewhere right i used to work with a person with asperger's and she was very I wouldn't say she was nice. I wouldn't say she cared about people's feelings. She was very blunt and very short with people. It took her a while to grow on you. Like she would grow on you eventually if you like, you know what I'm saying? Stayed around her, you know what I'm saying? Be kind. Like she'll grow on you. She'll grow to accept you. But initially she wasn't very, like we used to bump heads, beef at work like this every day. But then finally we just, we was cool. You know what I'm saying? And she always said she has, has had Asperger's and it was like, you know, just certain social cues and certain situations that a, a person might just pick up on. Like her brain just don't pick up on it. Like she just, it just don't compute. Does that have anything to do with this? I don't know. When you find out somebody has been diagnosed with something or somebody was going, somebody had like a, a different way of thinking, like clinically, it kind of like answers a bunch of questions. Like, why would this person do that? Oh, well, they got diagnosed with this okay well that kind of i can understand why their brain might take them there or you know trauma might take them there like anyway i'm rambling oh uh, yeah leave a comment below man you know what i'm saying this video kind of long i appreciate you for staying and watching i appreciate you for staying and watching the whole thing appreciate the love um we close to 2k by the time i post this we might already be at 2k you know what i'm saying so if we already at 2k man let's go with 3k so you watching this i ain't at 3k tap in if i ain't at 2k tap in you feel me but anyway, man, you yeah, appreciate all that love, man. And I'll see y'all in the next one.